Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you who are, who are here to, uh, for this uh, panel on mobilizing uh, the diaspora to promote the homeland. Uh, I want to start off by thanking uh, our hosts at the forum, Mr. Famoklis, for a magnificent forum. This is my first one, first one I have seen. And uh, the content, the presenters, the logistics have all, all really been quite superb and really very good. Uh, the, also, the, uh, the theory of change is affecting us very dramatically here. <laughs> because the, the, uh, the number of panelists has changed. The topic is a little bit changed, I think, by what we just heard. Uh, and uh, we're, so we're delighted that you're here. Uh, I'm going to start off, we decided yesterday, thank goodness, because we've also had our panel shortened by five minutes. We have new people, two new people, and uh, a shortened panel. But we've also uh, decided that we want to allow as much time as possible to engage in questions and answers. So rather than long, you know, a long discussion, each of the participants are going to uh, uh, speak very briefly. My introductions is, are going to be very, very brief. Uh, everything is on the website. This is an extraordinarily distinguished group of diaspora people. Uh, they, uh, uh, if you look cumulatively at their education, at their accomplishments, uh, both in business and in academia, in philanthropy, uh, they would all make their Greek mothers very, very proud. Uh, but we're not going to go into all of that. What we're going to do is have each of them talk a little bit about what they're doing, about their perspective on the, on the issue that we have here. I will start off by saying my name is Manny Ravellis. I'm a partner at k l Gates. Uh, and uh, that um, uh, this is my first forum, and I'm delighted to be here. Uh, we'll start, and we're doing this alphabetically, uh, with uh, Jimmy Athanasopoulos. Uh, he is uh, the CEO of an energy group. Uh, CFO of an energy group. He's also very engaged in uh, uh, diaspora work, in, uh, in uh, uh, engage uh, entrepreneurship in uh, the uh, uh, fields of philanthropy. Uh, he's uh, doing uh, terrific things all around the world, not only in Greece, but all around the world uh, with uh, one of the most, uh, uh, I think, famous uh, Greek uh, Transglobal groups uh, around. So that's uh, Jimmy. We also have with us uh, Mike Manitos. Uh, Mike is um, really three generations, 84 years, in Washington, D.C., his family. And he is, uh, have been kind of at the intersection of anything Hellenic and anything governmental and anything in Washington, D.C. And in all honesty, he's taking it to a new level. Uh, with his work with Ohi Day, his work with the National Hellenic Society. Uh, his work uh, in just uh, very many uh, levels is uh, really uh, something, I think, that uh, has made everybody uh, quite proud. Uh, he's also an archon. <laughs> um, we have uh, Peter Pappas. Uh, I'm sorry, Nick Pappas. I'm so sorry. sorry. Okay. Uh, Nick is a litigator. <laughs> he's a good lawyer. He's a banker with the Bank of Sydney. He's also uh, been involved in, uh, he's the Australian chair of uh, the Hellenic Initiative, and I think anybody in this room knows that it is the preeminent group that was formed out of the crisis to assist Greece both in uh, philanthropy uh, and uh, in invention. Uh, Lou Raptakis, uh, he's the only elected in this group. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, he has cut all kinds of new ground uh, for elected officials, uh, at, particularly at the state level where he's been able to mobilize people to state. He's been involved in a host of things that have helped Greece. Uh, the first one that I remember was uh, the uh, Liberty Hellas, uh, but there have been so many others and is actively involved and adds value both uh, in his activities as a consultant and as a state, uh, state senator. And our newest, uh, he's the intervention, by the way, Peter uh, Poulos. We, uh, um, uh, he is the executive director of the um, uh, Hellenic Initiative. Uh, again, we've talked a little bit about the Hellenic Initiative. It is the preeminent group that was formulated. He's now living in Athens. He grew up in San Francisco, where he uh, uh, essentially engaged in and promoted all kinds of really noble causes, everything from films to education to HIV, cancer, uh, and other good things. And our newest, 
panelists, who I'm sorry I had not met before, but apparently she has been here before, so she knows more, I think, than most of the rest of us about what she's doing, uh, is uh, uh, the CEO, uh, Effie uh, Kirtata, she's the CEO of Reload Greece, and she uh, is just uh, reinventing Reload Greece, and so we're going to be delighted to hear from her as well. So without any further ado, I think that's the introductions, and do you want to go ahead? Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you. So, the Libra Group, just a few words about us and then let's talk impact. Um, Libra Group is a privately owned international business group, active in 35 countries across six continents, um, has activities in six sectors, um, aviation, energy, hospitality, real estate, shipping, and we have uh, another arm of diversified investments. Of values, uh, sense of community, access to opportunity, and Filotimo. So, sense of community. Let's go down to, uh, to the initiatives, 10 social programs. Um, Libra Group has uh, established, beginning um, in the era of uh, the Greek crisis that turned into a recession, a heavy recession, heavy recession historically. Uh, it all started with the uh, Libra internship program, uh, which uh, basically gives uh, opportunity and uh, raises, increases employability to Greek human capital, which we highly believe in. So interns get a fair chance to work with uh, C-suite professionals, um, enhance their skills, and most of them, like 93, 94%, now work with uh, big players of the market, like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Boeing, Coca-Cola, et cetera, et cetera. This is a great program, um, humbly, modestly speaking, um, and I can, uh, you can just re refer to uh, the interns themselves and the alumni that consists of more than 400 uh, interns across the globe. 19, 2012, we established with the Hellenic Initiative and the amazing work they're doing, the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award, which now is rebranded into Involve Global. Involve Global uh, is there to stimulate entrepreneurship and enhance human capital, of course, and provide um, opportunity to entrepreneurs, Greek entrepreneurs. President Obama in 2013 asked us to replicate the program in the US. Um, and it's a successful program in the US that started in Greece, yes, and we're proud for that, very proud. Um, since then, we have supported 27, the program has supported 27 um, entrepreneurs that are now valued over 100 million euros. It just takes some uh, willingness to support the entrepreneurs, and this has been a very a highly successful program. The home project, two and a half years ago, two years ago, uh, as a response to the call uh, to action from President Obama, um, Libra Group established the, the Home Project, which provides a safe refuge uh, to unaccompanied minors. A holistic support, a listed network of support services are also provided to these uh, uh, unaccompanied minors um, that um, have literally walked their way from Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Africa and have no one on the face of this earth. So, the, the, the executive director of Home Project has done an amazing work. She's literally an angel, and she has given a home to these 200, 250 kids. So other than that, and just to, in an effort to cut everything short, um, as a courtesy to my co-panelists, uh, the group has also established the Seleni Institute, founded by Mr. George and Anizia Logothetis, uh, which is a global nonprofit, uh, emphasized and dedicating to supporting families um, that are, you know, hit by maternity mental health issues, and enhances emotional well-being of these families, individuals, and uh, kids as well. So uh, the main uh, goal here, the main aim, is to improve lives for this and future generation generations. So 
Uh, I'm sure most of you uh, have heard Concordia, the Concordia Summit, which seeks to uh, bridge private and public sector and promote discussion and solution international socioeconomic issues and humanitarian matters. It has attracted all these years, the last five years, uh, leaders from across the globe, from uh, statesmen to CEOs of uh, renowned uh, companies, uh, academia and religious leaders as well. The Libra Group has also established the Libra Fellowship, Libra Mentorship Program, and uh, anything that is not covered in uh, all the above has been uh, uh, supported in um, modest ways through corporate giving of the group. Thank you so much. Are we going alphabetically or? Okay. Um, my name is Peter Poulos. As Manny said, I'm the, the new executive director of the Hellenic Initiative, although I've been with the organization since its inception seven years ago. Um, as many of you know, we were, um, uh, we were born out of the crisis. Um, and uh, actually the Hellenic Initiative was formed at a meeting in Athens seven years ago with, our, with Bill Clint, with President Bill Clinton, who's our honorary chair. Um, our goal, to mobilize Greeks in the diaspora to support Greece. Uh, we fund nonprofits who are working to relieve pain and suffering. And, uh, and since this is an economic forum, uh, we uh, also support entrepreneurs and we fund economic development programs in Greece. Um, as many as you, uh, you probably know, we fund a program called Regeneration, which is Greece's largest uh, paid internship program. Um, and uh, we also fund a program called Venture Garden with Anatolia College, which is a mentoring program. We run Greece's only American-style venture fair, uh, which is an opportunity for us to... Um, we vet Greek companies, and uh, the Hellenic Initiative organizes an event where they actually get to meet uh, investors from around the world at a one-day event in Athens, which has been tremendously successful. Uh, and uh, we are very proud of our relationship with Libra Group and Involve and the Hellenic Entrepreneur, which was called the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award, which has done amazing things for creating jobs for um, for Greeks and supporting startups um, in Greece. Um, in the last six years, we've distributed close to 15 million in USD. Um, that money has been raised from approximately 5,000 donors around the globe in 25 different countries. Um, it's been a difficult journey, um, but one that I think is very rewarding for us as an organization to see how Greeks around the diaspora have mobilized to help Greece. I like to liken Greece's relationship with the diaspora to a moth's relationship with a light bulb which is that every, you're attracted to it, but every time you get close, you get burned. And so <laughs> we have worked hard to, on a parallel track with engaging with Greeks around the diaspora to raise money to help Greece, to um, on a parallel track to sort of build trust in Greece as an institution. And I think um, that uh, we have, with our program director, Michael Prinsos, who is here, we have found and vetted the right organizations in Greece that everyone can feel good about and can trust. Um, and so, um, as we continue doing our good work and as we continue working with organizations that have accountability and transpa transparency and responsibility, you know, we're able to raise more money for more people um, around the world. I, we just, in the beginning, we, ran, we would run an online campaign and maybe we would have, you know, 100 donors and we'd raise, you know, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. Now we run an online campaign and we get hundreds of donors and we our last campaign raised over a hundred thousand online. That came from eighteen different that came from Greeks and, and Philhellenes, I should mention, in eighteen different countries around the globe. Um, um, as a community, um, I feel like we are just sort of learning how to be philanthropists. Uh, we have a long way to go. We can learn a lot from our Jewish brothers and sisters and our Irish brothers and sisters and our Armenian brothers and sisters who've done an amazing job of mobilizing their diaspora. We're here to mobilize, to help mobilize our diaspora in a more significant way. Um, and, uh, and we're just getting started, but I think uh, we're, the Hellenic Initiative isn't, we're, we're apolitical, we're not involved in the church. Um, I don't, as the professor mentioned earlier in the panel, I don't, we're not looking to um, the government to 
sort of engage with Greeks in the diaspora. We're looking to the private sector to engage with Greeks in the diaspora. And, and I think that's the way to move forward. Um, and if we don't do that, we'll lose our diaspora. So um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to my friend and Kumbados, Mike Manatos. So my name is Mike Manitos. I want to begin by congratulating Simon Somokos. I've heard about this forum for years. This is my first time, and it really is, is magnificent. Look forward to the next couple of days. I want to thank my fellow panelists, many of whom are friends. Um, I come from the front lines of mobilizing the diaspora to promote the homeland. And I come with bad news, but with a message of hope. And here's what it is. Let me first tell you the three hats that I'm, I'm wearing today. The first hat is president of Manitos and Manitos and as Manny mentioned, which I should say, Manny, who's the only one who was not introduced, is in some ways uh, the most well-accomplished up here. Uh, he's a, an institution in Washington. The work he does in Washington in his field is remarkable. Please Google his name and you'll hear his uh, remarkable resume. But let me say that the first hat that I'm wearing is, is part of a family that for 84 years has been in Washington working either in or with the federal government, and in much of that, mobilizing the diaspora to promote Greece, Cyprus, the ecumenical patriarchate. Uh, my papu, my namesake, Mike Manitos, was the first Greek-American to work in the White House. He was President Kennedy and then President Johnson's Senate liaison. He lobbied the Senate for the White House. My father was on Capitol Hill when... Turkey invaded Cyprus, and my father led the effort to impose the arms embargo on Turkey. A lot of people wonder why the legislation in the Senate was spirited, uh, headed by a, a Greek-American and a, and a senator from Missouri. That was, my father was a legislative director for him. So then he mobilized the national Cypriot American and Greek American community to impose that legislation. I've spent my entire career mobilizing and working with the national community. So that's the professional side. Then there's a second hat that I wear. I serve on the board of six different national Greek American organizations from the executive, direct, executive board of Leadership 100, some of the most prominent Greek Americans across the country, the National Hellenic Society, and Manny and I are co-chairs of the DC chapter of that. I'm an archon of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. For the Greek Orthodox Church, I'm on the Archdiocesan Council. I'm on the board of the Hellenic Students Association. So I spend much of my time on these organizations talking about how do we engage the next generation? How do we make them as proud of our heritage and our culture and our country as we are? The third hat that I wear is a very personal one. I am third generation, half Greek. My children are fourth generation, one quarter Greek. Now we all are very proud Greek Americans. But the point in all of the, the, the common thread throughout is how do you engage not only this generation, but the next generation in promoting the homeland? And here's the bad news. And I think it's, it's reflected in the title of this panel. And it's unfortunately a mentality that I see far too often in Greece. I'll never forget when the crisis happened, we put together a roundtable discussion. This actually happened a number of times over the years of some of the wealthiest, most prominent Greek Americans to hear top Greek officials about how can we, the community, help Greece in this time of crisis. It was really breathtaking to me the number of times you heard the phrase, it's your responsibility to help your homeland. Unfortunately, that's a non-starter right there. Greece needs to find a way to connect personally to Greek Americans, to the diaspora all around the world in a way that's meaningful and relevant to them. Now here's the message of hope. All the people sitting up here, Libra with his social programs, THI with what they're doing, Lou what he does in the state legislatures across the country, and I'm very much looking forward to work, learning about the work my uh, new panelist is doing. But all these people are doing things that talk directly to the diaspora of today, the second, third, fourth generation, half, fourth Greek, the things that are meaningful and relevant to them that make them proud to be a Greek. We'll talk more about this in the conversation, but I also am the executive director of the Washington Ochide Foundation. How many of you have seen the video on Philotimo, the Greek secret? Well, our, our foundation put that together, and that was a great source of pride. And the first week, over a half million people saw it, and quick, soon thereafter, over a million people saw it. Because Greeks take great pride in this uniquely Greek concept of philotimo. We also have created a brand called Ochi Courage, the courage to say no 
in the face of great evil. Just as the Greeks said no to the Nazis, people today are saying ochi to the great evils of today, and we honor them. Nadia Murad, an ISIS sex slave who recently got the Nobel Peace Prize, second youngest in the history of the prize, stood up there at our gala two years ago and said, just as the Greeks said ochi to the Nazis, I say ochi to ISIS. It's a Greek concept, a source of great Greek pride that the Greeks, when every other country, 15 countries in a row, had been rolled over by an invincible force, the little country of Greece stood up and said, we may perish in this, but this is the right thing to do. They showed great courage and inspired the rest of the world. Those are the kinds of concepts that one-fourth Greek Americans can re resonate towards. It's not a responsibility. We need to find a way to connect with these people personally, to motivate them. It's out there. And our panel before, I think, started to get into this. Wh who, are, who is the diaspora? I think we need to think much harder about that, but it's a, these kinds of programs are doing an excellent job in providing hope for the future. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Effie, I'm um, the CEO and co-founder of Reload Greece. First of all, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tsomokos and the whole Delphi Economic Forum team, and uh, such an honor and pleasure to be among so many distinguished speakers. Um, so I represent an organization that is based in London, and we started in 2012. Uh, our mission is to inspire, educate, and enable young people to start businesses that have a social and economic impact back home from wherever these entrepreneurs are based. And uh, being in London and seeing so many young people leave Greece over the past few years, which is actually around 400,000, and most of them have gone to the US, uh, Europe, Germany, and the UK in particular, we see uh, different characteristics of this diaspora. We see a lot of young people around 25 to 35 when compared to previous waves who were much older than that. And we also see a lot of young, uh, skilled people with a couple of degrees. So we have all these people who are thirsty and want to connect back home. And the question is, first of all, would they want to return? And this is something we thought of in 2012 when we started the organization. Do all these people want to be mobilized to return back home? And the response is sure, but if the salaries can be matched to the ones that they have outside of home, and for sure, if, in the, if they see that the economic prosperity of the country is improving, and while this is definitely a reason why all young people would go back in the long term, in the short term, the question remains, how can we develop this connection in a meaningful way that would impact Greece? And so responding to that question, we said, as Reload Greece, we're going to use entrepreneurship as a vehicle and entrepreneurship as a tool to do that. And so we've developed educational programs and activities, pre-accelerator programs and other educational activities in the UK. We recently expanded and run these activities in Germany <clears throat> and the Netherlands in order to tap into as many diaspora Greeks as possible. And through this, we say, Come all together, find out ways in which you can connect your businesses back home. And we call this the Reload Greece Factor. So you can hire developers in Greece, you can hire, you can shift your manufacturing in Greece. And by being a member of the diaspora, you can find all these different ways in which you can contribute back home. So we've uh, educated over 4,000 people uh, via Reload Greece. And a recent example is Alex, who has uh, his tech company based in the UK and he has uh, his five developers in Thessaloniki. And we see more and more people having this connected business model just because it makes business sense. On the other hand, other than the young people, you have established, the established diaspora who are becoming amazing mentors and who are sharing their know-how and expertise and who have amazing positions in senior companies who want to, in some way, get involved. And what they do is they're helping these young enterprises uh, develop and, and become even better. And another example is, for example, Katerina, who's based in Greece, um, came to one of our programs in the UK, learned how to internationalize her business, and a few of her mentors have now become, mentor, uh, have now become members <coughs> of her board. So these types of connections are very interesting, and connections which make a social and economic impact back in Greece. So it's about finding ways, uh, not just renting, as mentioned in the previous panel, but ways which can create a sustainable future for Greece via business. And you see this diaspora wanting to get actively involved in many different ways, as well as creating role models. So all the successes that Greece has, 
showcasing them around the world to enable them to have an international platform to do more of what they're doing. And via a conference that we organize once a year, um, we showcase successful entrepreneurs who are Greeks to the rest of the world to enable them to do more of what they're doing and internationalize their businesses abroad. So I'm just sharing a few examples of the work that we've tried to do over the past few years and the ways in which you can develop these bonds between the diaspora and the homeland in a sustainable and economic way via business. So thank you. It will come as a source of great relief to you that I'm not speaking as, as either a banker or a litigator. Um, but I am speaking as the representative of the Australian branch, the Australian outpost, if you like, of the Hellenic Initiative. Uh, Peter has already summed up, I think, quite well everything that the Hellenic Initiative does. Can I add a, a slight Australian dimension to it? And I acknowledge the presence of uh, Her Excellency the Ambassador, Kate Logan, Australian Ambassador to Greece. There are two programs that we have that have had real strong impact amongst the Greek-Australian community. And there's always a risk when you introduce programs that seek to benefit Greece that you come across paternalistic. And that's the last thing we want to happen. The first program I want to describe to you is our volunteering program by which Greek Australians holidaying in Greece are asked to sacrifice one hour, two hours, a day, two days to work in the Laikes, the Agores, that spring up all over Athens and across Greece, of course. It's a wonderful tradition that we don't have. That has led to a remarkable reaction. The reaction of the Greeks themselves who see this generosity from the Greek Australians, but more to the point, the reaction of the Greek Australians who volunteer. They come back from these days that they spend in the Lake S yes, enriched. So volunteering is a, is a mutual process. And in fact, the impact that it has on the Greek Australians is in many respects more significant than the benefit they deliver. That's the first program I want to mention to you. The second is our internship program by which we bring unemployed Greek graduates to Australia with the condition that they return at the end of six months and seek gainful employment. We have had wonderful support from Corporate Australia for this initiative. And I'm talking about Corporate Australia, non-Greek Corporate Australia. Banks, insurance companies, architectural firms, legal practices. And what happens there is of course, the young intern, the young graduate, returns enriched with a fortified CV and in nearly all cases but two uh, goes into gainful employment on their return. But again, the benefit is mutual because these companies, in most cases, have become enriched by the presence of a Greek, young Greek graduate within their ranks. So, uh, that's, they're, they're two examples of how the Australian brand of the Hellenic Initiative has delivered benefits that enrich both the recipient of the generosity but also the giver of the generosity. And a final point, and I just want to pick up Professor Brevalakis's point about uh, regional identities. We're finding that's fading very quickly and what's taking its place is a galvanised Hellenism. The various other fortites, uh, siloi, uh, whatever they were, Leskes, uh, whatever manifestation for whatever part of Greece, I come from Castellorizo. We had a very strong and robust Castellorizian club in every city of Australia. They've all faded, unfortunately, over time. But perhaps fortunately, because what's taken their place is a galvanised Hellenism, a Hellenic spirit, at least in Australia. And that has uh, enabled us at the Hellenic Initiative to uh, harness that energy for the betterment of Greece and for the benefit of Australia. So they're my comments, thank you. Thank you, and I also want to uh, thank Mr. Tomokos for a great opportunity to be here and also for putting together the Delphi Economic Forum. But ladies and gentlemen, as the diaspora, the, the political portion, our state legislators back home play a very key important role. As you know, we have five members of Congress, a newly elected member of Cong Congress, Chris Pappas from uh, New Hampshire, one of our former colleagues. We have two lieutenant governors, one secretary of state, 
12 state senators and about 30 state reps. And what's important is we encompass 16 states in the United States. That means direct access to 32 members of the U.S. Senate and over 100 members of the U.S. Congress. Numerous governors, numerous economic development agencies, and many Fortune 500 companies in those 16 states direct access with Greek American legislators. And that resonates in an important role of what's happening here in Greece, getting those U.S. companies involved in Greece. Last year during the Thessaloniki uh, uh, ecstasy, with Ambassador Pyatt leading the charge, three of those state legislators were here with their U.S. companies. When Minister Apostolakis was in Washington two years ago at the Lexington Conference, five of us got together to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the defense minister, with key members of Congress, Senator Stephen Pappas from Wyoming, introducing him to Senator Barrasso, and Congresswoman Elizabeth Cheney. My colleague from Georgia, introducing him to Senator Perdue, leading members of the key armed services committee in foreign relations. My two U.S. Uh, members, U.S. Senator Reid and Senator Whitehouse and Jim Langevin, he met with five members of Congress in three hours. The U.S. Congress has very well respected Greece because of that collaboration with our colleagues in government, and the results are enormous. The blocking and suspension of the F-35s, the IMAT increase from $100,000 to $1 million, and it helps in my state, the Naval War College, where we have Greek members of the military attending that college for a year. It couldn't happen with the generosity and the increase of many of us here in the room working to push that increase. Also recently, with an agreement between New York State, Sunny Maritime, and the Maritime Academy of Either. First time this has happened between Greece and the United States. And it resonates to tourism. We're gonna have five U.S. major, three U.S. major carriers and two foreign carriers nonstop service from New York to Athens this summer, promoting tourism and increasing the numbers. And the list goes on and on. And when I talk about the other side, is helping Greek companies promote their products in our home states. There is a lot of importance value of making that connection. Our whole delegation coming to Greece, meeting with members of the Greek parliament, meeting with many members of the ministries, whether it's in defense, foreign ministry, economy, and also working together with our colleagues and also one of the best ambassadors that Greece has had, Ambassador Pyatt, where we've had over 20 legislators in the last two years being hosted by Ambassador Pyatt, explaining and educating between ourselves and going back home to members of Congress what it is to be a diaspora in the political field and helping our homeland. I think that's very, very key, ladies and gentlemen. In this coming July, the first, second week of July, we're gonna have over 20 Greek American state legislators here attending an important conference. And I think this is just the beginning, and I think we've got to continue working very hard to we help result, because back in the United States, first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, like Mike had said, we think about our homeland. We think about our heritage, our orthodox religion, our language, and Greece is always inside of us on a daily basis. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Well, I think that was a very quick and effective summary of what a lot of the folks in the diaspora are doing to try and uh, uh, help Greece. I will mention just one other thing because uh, both Mike and I have been involved with the National Hellenic Society and it was actually modeled on Israel, which was the Birthright Israel program. And uh, we're uh, now having students each year. I can't remember what the total is, Mike. I, over, over 400 students coming over that have never been acquainted with Greece before but have some tie to Greece and uh, also working with the American College of Greece and doing that. Art Demopoulos has been doing that. So there are a lot of good programs. Uh, we wanted to leave time and there's not a lot but for questions and answers. So if you have a question for any of the panelists, please ask. Hello. Perfect. All right. Um,
first of all, thank you to all the panelists. It was a, a great talk by all of you. My name is Panagiotis Tsezos, and I come here with two hats. Um, firstly, as a member of the diaspora myself, I've grown up in Germany uh, as a first-generation migrant. And secondly, as the president of the Hellenic Society of the London School of Economics, uh, where I study. Um, and I would like to ask you the following. Throughout my life, um, I've observed that Greeks in the diaspora um, only need a very small nudge to go to Greece. Where others see risk, where others see red tape, Greeks in the diaspora seek an opportunity, seek an excuse, a justification for them to go back and help. However, we cannot pretend that Greeks in the diaspora will magically um, come back and help Greece and do all those wonderful things at their own loss. It's not just not logical, just like any other private individual wouldn't. Um, anyone who, well, seeks to protect their self-interest. Um, my question, therefore, is the following. What can the public sector of Greece do to help the diaspora help it? It's a question to all the panelists, really. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, so uh, I want to commend on your, uh, the question you asked uh, yesterday in the opening ceremony. So back to your question. Um, there are many ways people from uh, abroad, the Greek diaspora, can help. And there are many ways they have been helping. I mean, so many programs. Um, now, as in terms of uh, private and public sector, I wouldn't make it so complicated. Where there's a will, there's a way. And the need is there. There are, there are many opportunities here. And if you define help as investments, then yes, there are many things uh, the government could do to help and facilitate this. Like uh, um, the legal, accelerating the legal process. Like uh, eliminating bu bureaucracy. Like um, one-stop shop for um, establishing um, companies like Estonia. Um, however, there are ways to really create impact and really change lives here in Greece. And my fellow panelists here um, have attended many, many panels, many panels throughout their careers. Uh, there are many technocrats out there, and sometimes these technocrats ask for key metrics and key KPIs on the impact of CSR. Well, changing one person's life is, I mean, you can't beat that. Changing people's lives in small ways. Everybody could, can help. Everybody is able to help. From uh, giving in a piece of advice through establishing a mentorship program in their company, here or abroad. Um, it just takes willingness and things can happen. Manny, could I answer that? Could I address that question as well? I, I really like that question, and we think about um, that issue all of the time. And I think it used to be in the diaspora that Greeks connected, like my parents' generation in particular in the United States. I mean, my, my great-grandparents left Greece in the 1890s and moved to Greece, uh, moved to America. So, you know, I'm already third generation in the United States. My parents' generation, though, connected to Greece through the church. <clears throat> That's no longer the case. So, like, my generation is not connecting to Greece through the church, and so you have fourth, fifth, sixth generation Greek Americans now who are, um, they want to connect with the Batrida, and they're, so they're doing it through education, they're doing it through philanthropy, um, they're doing it through travel, um, they're doing it through volunteerism. Um, and so we're trying to look at all of those aspects to say, well, how do we connect our like the, the new generation of Greeks with Greece. And I think everything that's been mentioned here, mentoring, you know, the birthright program, the National Hellenic Society does, the volunteerism program, all the volunteering opportunities that, that THI does, uh, that THI Australia does in Greece, what Jimmy's company does, you know, with um, uh, mentoring and supporting entrepreneurs, you know, in Greece, all of that helps. We need to be doing more of it. I think when you, 
I, I'm going to say there's something that the government has done that I think has also helped, which is that because it's compulsory to learn English in, in Greece, all of a sudden you have, unlike other diasporas, you know, you have an immediate connection. Like, you know, the English-speaking diaspora has an immediate connection with Greeks in Greece because there's no longer a language barrier. Um, because, you know, second, third generation Greeks in the diaspora are no longer speaking Greek, you know. So all of a sudden you have, and that is really the greatest way to connect the diaspora is through language. So all of a sudden you've removed the language barrier, which I think is a huge asset for, for this country, actually, as it tries to connect with its diaspora. Hi. 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 Uh, my name is Joanna Theodorou. Uh, full disclosure, I'm one of the founding members of Reload Greece, so thanks for including Reload on the panel. Uh, one question I, I wanted to ask, possibly to all of you, is it's fantastic that these programs exist, uh, but I wanted to hear from you what's next. What are the things that need to be done more of? Is there perhaps a part of the diaspora that is not being mobilized? Um, are there new programs that could, or programs that exist that could be strengthened? Um, what do each of you think for the next stage of mobilizing the Greek diaspora? Well, since I'm holding the microphone, I guess I'll, I'll be the first to answer. I think up here you have some very effective programs that are looking into exactly that, like Peter said, that we're, we're constantly evaluating what are the traction points with our personal diasporas. I know my experience, again, with a couple different hats I'm wearing, there are a significant number of Greek Americans who are faithful, pious people. They do it through the church. There are other Greek American youth who have, like Manny said, who have never been to Greece. They go through these programs that we've modeled after Birthright Israel. They come and the, the small pilot life of light of Hellenism within them is ignited. And they come back very proud Greeks. So I, I think it's there, there's not one overall answer and I think but that but I think that's what these programs are doing so effectively is, is trying to find a personal way to connect with someone with some level of connection to Greece and you know igniting that let me add one final quick thing that I learned yesterday that was remarkable the the Irish analogy that a couple of used this is a prominent US journalist who was Irish and when the Irish crisis happened he tells me that in the United States they were literally going through uh, telephone books at the time and looking up Irish names and calling them and, and slowly bringing them into the Irish culture, events, community, and, and slowly in, in an attempt to try to find where their attraction point was with their homeland. I think that's a big mistake Greece has made. There's just kind of general assumption that, well, come on, you, we're, we're your homeland. You got you to help us out. You've got that may have worked for the immigrants, that may have worked for first, maybe second generation. Unfortunately, there's just no sense of obligation. You need to find, like the Irish did very effectively, where's the traction point with your homeland? Explore that. And, and they like the, the question before, they, all they need is a little bit of nudging. You need to find the area where they, they can be nudged from. Yeah, let me just add on that for a minute. Again, coming out of the National Hellenic Society uh, approach uh, to this, which is they have actually sponsored a number of programs, uh, things on television, PBS, Diane Kachilis, I think, has reached out on, on the food side to lots and lots of people and sparked a kind of a connection uh, with a lot of people there. They've done a lot of historic things. Uh, the uh, What was the name of the television program? I think it was from Agamemnon to... Uh, uh, that uh, uh, was uh, an exhibit at the National Geographic, but that traveled uh, on television a fair amount. So they've been doing a lot of things to reach out, not only to Greeks, but also to Philhellenes. Because I think it's a real mistake to just think that all the ties are ethnic. As uh, Mike mentioned, uh, once you get a generation or two away, the ties are as cultural as anything else. And so Philhellenes, I think, are very helpful in doing that. Could I just make one last comment to answer that question, what we shouldn't do rather than what we should do. The last thing we want to do is politicise the diaspora communities. I, expressing a personal view, that the more we formalise engagement, like the old SAE model that proved to be unsuccessful, uh, we've seen now, if you like, a deregulation of engagement and these wonderful initiatives being spawned. So the last thing we want to see is a formalised engagement the last thing I'd like to see is enfranchising the Greeks of the diaspora in terms of votes. Uh, that will just lead to further politicisation across the diaspora world. And so the, the looser the arrangement in many respects, the more 
thing, uh, new shoots will ultimately flower. I think there's no time. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, thanks to all our panelists for participating.